Hi, and welcome to Spry Whimsy. Today, I am going to show you the new Polywinder from Spin Illusion and Spin Perfect. It is an auto winder to automatically feed your bobbins. This is designed by Mike Polly. It works on all the Spin Illusion wheels on the 4 ounce, 12 ounce maybe, 8 ounce, and 16 ounce are available. The 32 ounce, not yet. But let's back up because I'm going to show you how to put this on from the beginning. When you get a poly winder, it basically is two major parts. Um, I'm not sure how many parts are disassembled when you get it because I just read the instructions and it kind of implies you need to put this piece together. This is the fulcrum pin here. There's a washer on either side and a little nut on the back and there's a set screw here. When you assemble this, it can slide forward and back. You want it forward towards the hook over here. This set screw will allow you to push it back to help fill the back of the bobbin if it's not filling it being filled on its own. You also so this is the main poly winder piece and this is a, the counterweight to this. Both of these replace your flyer arms. So let's get started about talking about the flyer arms and how they're put onto the wheels. So I'm going to start here with a polywog. Polywog has got the 4 ounce head on it. There's also the 12 ounce head. Um, I haven't heard uh, definitively yet if it will work in the 12 ounce, but I don't know why it wouldn't. Um, with the polywog, you've got easy access to the screws that hold the flyer arms on. So to take these flyer arms off, you basically take the, the orifice bar off, take your bobbin off, and then it's one screw in the back that's holding it in and it's pretty tight friction fit in there. Okay, if you have an Echo, this is an old Echo head, Aquarian World, and it will work on here. However, it's not the easiest thing to take apart. And you might think about it because if you look, it's really hard to get to that screw around the head on a four ounce Echo. And you can see over here, it's just as tough. On a newer one, you can disassemble the head easily to get to those. On an older one, you have to play around with this um, E-clip back here. You need to remove that to slide the flyer head off to be able to get to those screws easily. I did it, and we did work with this flyer head. Um, I did it by just kind of angling my screwdriver in there and carefully pulling them back and putting them back on. Um, it does work on the older wheels. Now over here on my Firefly, I have an 8 ounce head on it right now. The 8 ounce head, it is very easy to get to that screw that holds on the flyer arm. So when you're doing an 8 ounce, it should be very easy to change out those screws. Or pull the screw out to change out the flyer arm. Now I've got a Bullfrog here with a 16 ounce. And you can see it's very easy to get to that. Um, screw head to get to the flyer arm so the 16 ounce shouldn't be a problem and it would be the same if you had a mock or a monarch or a um, firefly with a 16 ounce they're way out here um, as I'm taping this we there is not one yet for the 32 ounce um, available but I, I don't know if that's coming or not so since I have a four ounce uh, poly a poly winder. I'm going to put it on the polywog. So first thing I'm going to do is take out the screws to remove the flyer arm. Now before I take this apart, I just want to note that your orifice bars are keyed on with these little notches onto the flyer arms. So that is important and the alignment of this flyer arms because these can twist once you loosen them up and that is how we're going to align the polywinder is because with that notch and our orifice bar. So let me take this apart. All right, once you've loosened the screw, the flyer arm just comes off. I'm leaving it there for the moment. Don't lose your screw. So when you're looking at the arm of the polywinder, the magnet goes towards the front because that's going to hook onto your orifice bar. The other side goes to the back. The arm itself has a flat side to it, just like the front does for aligning your orifice bar. So on the back side, there is a flat section, so there is one way that it fits in. 
So as I slide this in here, it won't go in, but if I turn it, it sets down in. All right, so I've put that in and tightened the screw, but I haven't fully tightened it yet because we need to do a little alignment on it before I finish it up. But next, I'm going to spin it around and put in the balance bar on the other side. And again, this really only goes in one way so if I put it in the hole I have to turn it until it slips back in to place using that notch to align it. Now at this point they still wiggle. But I'm going to grab my orifice bar here and put it on so I have my notches there and put those on into place and make sure they're both set and it snaps on correctly. So I'm going to do it. Oh, there it is. Now it seems to be aligned and aligned. And then you can tighten it up once you know your orifice bar is going to snap on correctly. There's still a little play, but I try to make sure that this curve is at least tucked into the head so there's no nothing sticking out that's going to do any catching on anything else. And when that's all in place, your flat spot here should line up with a flat spot here so it's straight across and you shouldn't have any problem in the future putting on your orifice bar. Once you get there, tighten it down in the back. On the four ounce here, you'll also note I got this screw right there that it is butt up right against. So that kind of helps secure it as well. Now that I have all the parts assembled, we can try to thread on some yarn and do a little spinning. So like I noted, this, this little fulcrum here um, has the set screw on it. If you tighten that set screw, it'll push this back towards the back of the wheel and that will adjust how it fills the bobbin. Also note these little stops here. You can slide them in, um, kind of squeeze them and slide them. It's hard to do with one hand here. But that allows you to, if you have a section of bobbin that isn't filling, you can kind of guide the yarn to a section, and I'll show you that in a bit. Okay, so the path of the thread of your yarn goes, first of all, your leader thread would go under your bobbin, just let it fall below, comes up over the fulcrum pin, under this little hook, and then to your orifice hook like that. Let's see if I can do this. And then you just spin it and let it feed in. And let's see if you can see if it's moving. So I slow down here. So over time it'll just slowly adjust and fill your bobbin. And we'll get another video on spinning with the polywinder in a bit. So this bobbin, as you see it, was filled with the polywinder on the Corian Whorl one that I had it on originally. And now we're going to play around with it on the polywog instead. So if I decide that, say, I'm not getting enough fill in the back or in the front, and I want to just kind of add some extra to that. You see the little pins here? I moved it and then I can come around under the hook and then it'll kind of force it to feed just in that back area. It is a pretty amazing little device considering there are really no moving parts on it itself to feed the uh, yarn back and forth across your bobbin just naturally without you really having to put much effort into it. We're just using these little clips if there's an area that doesn't want to feed. And like I said, if it seems to never feed to the back, then you make the little adjustment of tightening the screw, which will push this pin back a little bit, which will force a little more to the back. But you want to make sure you don't overdo it so it stops filling the front. And to move one of these pins, you're just going to squeeze it and it just sort of slides forward and back. Just don't take it all the way off the end and lose it. They're really hard to photograph, aren't they? 
So that wraps up a polywinder assembly on a spinolution wheel. I hope you found this useful. I will be showing another video soon on the use of this, but I'm going to have to have my wife help me out with that because she's a much better spinner than I am. Thanks for watching.